without further ado. This is the Patreon launch, um, website for our launch. I'm going to quickly go over all the tiers. There are six tiers altogether. We've got tier one, which is two bucks per month. Um, all of the benefits are listed. You got tier two, all access patrons, where you guys will see work in progress behind the scenes and um, be the first to see uh, uh, um, finished pages. And you guys will also get access to the Discord server. Then we got tier three, which is the critique submissions tier this is going to be a new stream on fridays where i am going to be critiquing the work that you submit it's 15 bucks per month and uh, on the live stream i will show you guys how you can improve on the work that you submit um, to be critiqued uh, there are other benefits to it as well there's some requirements on there I'll read through them on the patreon page which i have uh, listed on the twitch channel you could also check them out through other social media. There's the link tree on each uh, social media website and you can access the Patreon page from there. So just quickly moving on to the next tier, which is the Kickstarter patrons tier. For 25 bucks, I will paint a high resolution digital painting of you. Um, you just gotta send me a portrait of you from your head down to your chest and I encourage you guys to wear masks, makeup, glasses, expressive face expressions, hats, and accessories, but it's not required. Um, so yeah, once you send that in, I will start uh, painting a live stream. And uh, that's going to be on Thursdays. So Fridays is going to be critique, and the Kickstarter patron painting will be on Thursdays for two hours. And that's for both streams. So for this tier, it's going to be two hours on Thursday. And for the um, critique tier, it's going to be for two hours on Friday. Then next, we got the tier five artist promotion. If you're an intermediate or advanced artist and you want to get some airtime on Art Lounge, you want to share your content, um, apply to this one. This is, this is a good opportunity for that. There's some important uh, notes for getting selected. I highly recommend you guys read through that before you join this tier. Um, and pretty much anything that I'm going to go over on here, or I would go over, is already on uh, in the previous bro broadcast. So if you check out the previous broadcast, there is a post labeled um, Patreon page launch and schedule change. And over there, you guys can get more uh, in-depth description of every single tier, what the requirements are, just talking about all of that stuff. Um, and just to save more time and stream more of the figure drawing basics uh, stream. Then for the last one, we got the tier four, which is private tutoring, and that's available to 15 people. Um, it's all levels. You don't have to be intermediate or advanced. You could be a beginner. Just have something to send me uh, so we could start. You'll get a 30 minute video, 15 depending on how much work you've done, um, but you'll get a total of four videos per month. Uh, and I will show you guys, I will give you um, hands-on input, step-by-step -step instructions and demonstrations showing you where you can improve. And um, you will also receive a PSD file for you to explore at your own time, at your own pace. Uh, there will be homework. I'm going to assign you guys some things to do where I see you need to improve. Uh, and that's just to get your money's worth and also for you to improve faster, considering you're getting one video per week. Uh, some homework will make things more interesting for you throughout the week until the next video. You'll get access to a private uh, Discord channel just between me and you. So you could send me notes, you could send me um, your progress, you could send me questions, comments, whatever you got in that channel. I know it's, it's going to be just between me and you. Um, and I'll address it in the next video or I'll write you back. Um, so for this tier four personal videos per month, PSD file, exclusive Discord channel dedicated just to you and uh, tier five members only Discord channel as well. 
where people in this tier, all the 15 of you, will have a channel just dedicated for you, for you guys to connect with each other, get to know each one another, um, share content, you know, things that you're interested in, kind of argue like, uh, and or just pretty much anything under the sun. Uh, you guys can just um, create a community within each other. And you also have access to the uh, general Discord channel where everybody pretty much gets access to it and uh, you guys can all connect with one another there as well. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. As I mentioned, you could check out the previous um, posts in the previous broadcasts uh, about the Patreon launch and you can ask me any question you have um, during the live stream or even off stream and I'll write you back. Um, all right, with that said, let's jump into... figure drawing so what you're seeing this is from um, last night's stream I was coloring Conan the Barbarian these panels that I draw out um, in the drawing comics stream so you guys can check that out as well make sure you also check out the schedule change in that post that I mentioned um, the patreon page launch and schedule change video uh, where you guys can see what the schedule is going to look like. Um, for those of you who have been tuning in, you might have noticed that I'm only streaming in the evenings now, and unfortunately, that has to be the case. I have other projects that I have to attend to, and it's just not enough time. Um, but I'm still going to be streaming every day at 8 p.m. and 9 p.m., and I'm just going to alternate all the um, streams you guys have seen previously throughout the week. With these new uh, two new streams coming up once people start submitting once that starts growing you guys will see um, patreon painting on Thursday and um, critiques on Friday all right so just wanted to go over this real quick this is where we left off last time um, or actually you know it is that time and I think it's beneficial just to go over real quick about important things that you could do to improve your drawing. And I'd like to start off with this page, actually, this is the page that we were on. Um, different things that you could do to improve your drawing. You know, I think that one of the most important things you could keep, keep in mind uh, when you're starting out to draw, when you're teaching yourself to draw, even in intermediate, if you're like trying to work out bad habits or trying to learn good habits, uh, this this page has plenty of examples of that and opportunities for you to do that. Um, so I recommend everybody to have like a little sketchbook. You know, I'm, I like the soft covers. They're pretty flexible. You could put it in your pocket. You could put it in uh, your book bag and carry it with you. Public transportation, any place where you just have idle time. And you could sit and practice how to... Um, transition from highlight midtone to shadow in a very smooth way you don't want it to be stark you know a lot of people don't really pay attention to it but hold on a second had to change that one <laughs> Um, so yeah, you you want to be able to teach yourself how to draw lightly. You know, you don't want to not pay attention to it and then all of a sudden catch yourself pressing really hard on the paper and, you know, uh, ingraining lines into the paper that later on you just won't be able to avoid. You know, or they're just still going to be there. Um, and it's just going to make the process very rigid and... Uh, in some ways stressful you know because you're trying to draw the lines that you want but they keep falling into the groove of that hard line that you made before and you try to erase and it's still on paper um and it, it becomes more complicated that way um whereas if you keep it light you keep it in like a sketch form at the beginning especially you're able to pick the lines that you want you're able to um erase the lines that you don't want and they won't be there or they won't be as prominent as opposed to when you do press harder and it just makes the entire process more enjoyable 
you know, it leaves you room for correction. It leaves you room uh, to to adjust things. So that's a really good habit, and this exercise is a perfect way to do it. You know, you do start out light, and then gradually, little by little, you start to press harder and harder to transition from one to the next to the next. And as you could see here, you can't really tell the difference when it transitions into it. Whereas here, this is something that a lot of beginners make. The, mi the mistake that they make is they understand that there's supposed to be three different uh, sections in a way. Right? It has to be highlights, midtones, and shadows, and they actually just draw them in these sections as opposed to a smooth transition from one to the other. Um, and here's another example of that. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, look, I did it. Highlights, midtones, and shadows, but they're missing the entire point, which is to um, practice making sure that it's a smooth transition and also um, controlling the pressure that you put onto the paper and the pressure that you put on a pencil. So all those things come into play when you're practicing this very simple, almost mindless exercise. Um, it gives you that opportunity. You could also practice how to crosshatch. You know, that's something that also improves your hand-eye coordination, your ability to control the pencil for, for you to be able to make these lines um, and make them parallel to each other. You now it's a challenge and that's something that becomes useful uh, later when you start to draw backgrounds, when you start, you know, putting in certain details. It requires to have that sort of attention um, and ability, in a sense. Um, and it's just another perfect exercise, kind of simple. It's also pleasant, you know, it's not too complicated um, to, to have more control over the pencil, in a sense, to practice how to draw lightly. Um, similar to this exercise and you could do it all over the page you know it's it, it doesn't really require that much room you could just fill up the entire page full of this stuff to just continue to practice it um, yep so then jumping into something else that you could do practicing another very important shape the circle you know that is the beginning of uh, drawing the head and you want to make sure that it is as perfect of a circle as you possibly can make it because if it's any other shape and you draw the line down the middle, you'll see how it's disproportionate. It's kind of deformed. And um, as we've learned through the stream, the head is the unit of measurement to make sure everything is proportionate and in um, proportionate relation to each other. Um, so when you draw the head that's kind of deformed, everything else is going to be deformed. You're going to be using the head as the measurement. So when you're measuring the head going uh, for for the width of the, uh, the body, for example, and the head is really deformed, this is a perfect example of it. You can see how on one side it looks all right, and the other side it's way too big. And if you were to try to make a circle to define that shape or to understand what shape the head is, you'll see that it's not, it's not a circle. It's kind of like an egg shape um, when it's laying down horizontally. Um, or just like, you know, oblong kind of weird shape. And because of that, and then once you start using that as your unit of measurement to make sure everything is proportionate, you're gonna see how everything else gets shifted. Everything else gets kind of uh, dis distorted. Um, so, as we mentioned, the width of the body is three heads going across. So when you do that, you see that it actually does require for things to line up this way. And then once you kind of zoom out right after you just kind of you do the drawing and then you look at it from a distance or you just gl glance to see how proportionate it looks, you realize like, man, everything is shifted. Everything is deformed. And that's because you didn't start out with the right head shape. This is another example of somebody who neglected the perfect circle, in a sense, to start out with, to draw the head. And their, their head is really, um, like, elongated. And since we use the head as the unit of measurement, the same example, uh, the same idea ends up showing that the rest of the body is going to be just as weird and uh, narrow and kind of elongated as the head. Um, 
And this is an example of some somebody who drew it with no regard towards uh, the head as a unit of measurement for everything else. Like, they probably understand how the body looks, you know, um, proportionally, but then the head looks weird. You know, it doesn't really suit or uh, make sense in a way. And of course you see now and you're like, well, there's so many cartoons, and there's so many animations and illustrations that are stylized, and that's true. But um, if you were to look further into the artist, you would see that um, into their work, you would see that oh, they have a lot of practice drawing the body, proportionate drawing the body um, in, uh, in proportion to everything else. And then once they established that, once they understood it, once they were able to draw it, they were able to exaggerate things. And it looked right, you know, it looks relatively uh, correct, even in stylized form. Um, so before you jump to that, before you jump to stylizing your work, make sure that your foundation is strong. You know, it's kind of like uh, laying on the, when you're talking about like building a building, right? You're laying on the beams, but you're not making sure that the beams are stable and that they're actually um, parallel to each other and they're straight and they're standing, um, they're standing upright. You're just kind of doing this um, shoddy job with it, with it, you know, and just uh, the beams are kind of holding still. They're a little bit angled. They're kind of shaky. And then you start laying on the detail, the bricks, you know, you start putting up the bricks, you start um, creating the windows. And then by the time you get to the end of it, you're just like, well, the entire building is shifted, you know, or the, the building is about to collapse, really. So that's kind of the same idea with drawing as well. If you start out with a terrible foundation, no matter how much detail you're going to make or add to it, it's going to look bad. You know, it's going to look like it's uh, barely uh, put together properly or just deformed you know, or distorted in a way when that wasn't the intention. Uh, and another artist that I bring up as an example and just a good example of it is Picasso. You know, everybody knows his work and they see really stylized portraits that look distorted, that look... Um, in some ways uh, weird you know but if you were to look into his work um earlier his much earlier work you would see that uh he spent a lot of time studying the uh studying the human figure you know there's some realistic work out there and it's something that i showed you guys as an example in the first um first sessions of Art Lounge, the first parts of Art Lounge, and I believe it was the um, basic stream. It was the first episode of Drawing Basics. Um, so you guys might check that out. There is a pretty good example there, and you see side by side an example of Picasso's work, what he drew prior to his style, and what his style ended up looking like. Um, so just to give you guys an idea that it is important to practice to draw the human figure before you jump into stylizing your work before you you could do both you know you could spend your time in fact that's great if you do both um if you spend time studying the figure studying anatomy and then taking that and trying to um you know stylize your own work or create something that's very unique to your uh, to your taste um they both kind of lend themselves to each other you know um, into that process of you developing your own style and also improving your um, ability to draw from real life. Um, there is no back going back. You know, you can't practice and then go backwards. You're always moving forward in a sense. The only thing, your, your expectations to yourself start to change. Um, you might not like what you're doing because you expect even more or you got better results and you want to see even more. Um, better results um, but anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it there for the review for talking about that stuff and I will jump into the next part of this chapter we're still dealing with the legs and I think in this um, on this page it's a really important one you um, you get to see something that 
really makes things a little bit easier to understand. Um, when it comes to drawing the leg, for example, a lot of times people are just um, intimidated by the complexity of all the muscles and so on and so, so forth. But there is, a, um, there is a good little tip, I guess, or a little shortcut visually for you to be able to understand and memorize the general shape of the, of the human leg. And this is it right here. Um, you get, you, you see how it curves, kind of. There's a curve to it, in a sense, and you could build on that curve. And I'm gonna draw both legs out for you guys so you see. Um, And you could see that uh, the lines that I'm making at the muscles. Now, of course, you have to still understand the muscles. You have to still um, understand where certain muscles are and how they jot out. But as far as the shape themselves of the leg, it's it's pretty simple. So once you create this guide for yourself, this guideline, your leg. Um, your legs start to look much better. You know, so this idea again, you notice how um, externally from this guideline, this this line right here that shows this curvature, how it, uh, how there's a wave here and then it dips inwards. It's kind of like a roller coaster as well, I want to say. Um, but this wave right here is your guideline for drawing everything else. And you can see how the external lines follow that wave, in a sense. It's just a matter of understanding the muscles afterwards. Like, okay, this is, um, you know, it dips in a little bit here. And the muscles come out. Like, these are um, your calves coming out more. This is also, a, I'm going to draw an, another example of this leg behind. And it's very similar to this, in a sense.
So you can see it's the same pattern as the other leg in a sense, but this is the back view of this leg. Um, so once you get this guideline, it's a little bit more simplified. You know, it's, it's less intimidating and there's less calculation in a sense. You still have to, you know, you still have to um, figure out, as I mentioned, where the muscles are and where the, uh, the calves come out you know, and how wide it gets towards the top. But at least this framework gives you some idea of the shape to follow when you're doing that. And I thought that it's very useful, actually. And then from that point on, when I was drawing legs, especially, you know, because we were talking about before how the cylinder shape pretty much defines a lot of parts of the body. So when you're drawing the legs and you start out with the cylinder shapes, it simplifies things. And then once you get that, you can um, draw the guidelines. And then from there, could start shaping it to meet those guidelines. And again, with practice, you know, you're doing it over and over and over again, you are able to um, grasp this more easily over time. And something I mentioned before, you know, you don't always have to draw from the same example. In fact, the more examples that you draw from, which is why it's really beneficial to draw from real life, the more you start to see the similarities. Even though there are slight variations, there are slight differences, some people's muscles are different. Um, overall, you will see how this, this guideline is very much common in a lot of people. Um, and that can help you understand how to draw legs even more. So really, I just wanted to do that example uh, to, um, to show you guys this little, this little guideline, this guideline that really helps grasp um, the general shape of the leg. Now here, I'm going to do an example. Quick one here.
to demonstrate again how this curvature continues, right? It's the same same curve here applies when the uh, the body is in profile view and you're trying to draw the leg from there. And then one more example. Gonna draw the guide real quick. And because uh, something that I mentioned, because you practice the cylinder shape, and that's another thing. As I was mentioning, um, using this to practice all sorts of stuff on there, it's, it's excellent way to practice drawing the circle perfectly and also the cylinder shape. You know, the cylinder shape really uh, helps in a lot of different ways. You understand the body in a more simplified uh, form, which allows you to like just tackle it without feeling intimidated and being like, oh, these muscle grooves and there's all this other stuff that I, I don't really know. Uh, but when you simplify it, it becomes less intimidating and you're able to just get there. Once you're there, once you're at a point where you have the structure and you have the figure down, then from there you could take it to the next stage, which is, you know, the same idea as building a building. You, you lay down the be beams, you lay down the foundation, and you could um, start laying on the bricks then. So this would be the stage where you could start laying on the bricks. You could start getting into the details and uh, giving the figure more structure, giving it more um, muscle and definition and that sort of thing. But just to show you guys, the cylinder pretty much is used for every single part of the body. So if you practice that in the sketchbook, how to draw it, how to shade it, you know, not making the mistake of drawing it or shading it the same way you would the circle, you know, as I mentioned here. Where is it? Here, you know, you're shading the circle. It's kind of different. You know, you are doing it from the top down. And as it curves, the sh shadow starts to form underneath it. It's not the same thing for the cylinder shape. If there is a light source at the top and it's shining down on the cup, it wouldn't be in this, um, in this pattern. As you see here, this is just an example of shading it well, but using the wrong pattern and wrong direction in a sense of shading. Uh, the cylinder shape would shade from side to side rather than from top to bottom. Um, so even if you were to do it well, it just doesn't look right. It looks like there is something in the glass that it is a glass, but if it was a solid object, if you couldn't see through it, it wouldn't look like this. It just it, there's something that's off about it when you look at it, right? You keep wanting to imagine that it is full of some content, and that's what gives it the shadow at the bottom. Um, but another great way to test that is if you were to get yourself like a can, you know, from next time you open up a canned good, just uh, clean that out, use that as your reference for a lamp, or just you know buy one of those like wood ones as well. Um, the good thing is you could wrap paper around it, right? And you could, um, or even just use thick paper, like even this kind of paper. If you were to just form it into a cylinder shape and tape it, maybe add a top to it and bottom as well, um, then you could just put it up to the light and see how the light forms around it. And you'll see that it's not like this, and it's more this. It's a great way to study and understand shadows, not just the object, not just cylinder shape, but also understanding shadow and how it plays depending on where you put it on the table, you know. Um, 
It's very simple, it's easy, pretty much anybody could do it. You don't need anything high tech, you don't need to go on Amazon and buy anything, it's there for you in your house. You know, there's plenty of things. Just the only thing you have to make sure is that it's something solid and white as well because you, you could easily, you could see the shadows form on it more easily. And a lamp, that's pretty much it. And from there you really could study shadows and understand that. And uh, that could lend itself to when you're drawing the face. You won't make the mistake of just making shadows based on what looks good. You know, oh, the shadow for the nose looks good on the right, but the shadow for the lips look good on the left. It doesn't make sense when you draw something out like that. And I think I have an example of that, um, of that here somewhere. Where I was drawing the face. Um, let me show you guys real quick. Oh, it's here somewhere. There we go, it's the next page. So yeah, over here, this is a perfect example of it. I did a quick sketch of the face and you could see that, um, let's say the person just did the shadow on the left side and then the shadow for the nose is on the right side. And it doesn't look right, it doesn't make any sense. You know, despite the shadow making, maybe making the nose look right or protruding the nose out, um, it still, it just doesn't make sense. Whereas over here, you could see that the light source is coming from here. So it follows pretty much on everything. You know, the, the uh, shadow for the face underneath, you know, underneath the chin, it follows the same pattern as it does with the nose. You know, the shadow of the nose is on the same side as the shadow underneath the chin and the side of the face as well, you know. And this is something that kind of goes into both the cylinder and um, the round shape, you know, the circle shape or the ball shape, um, they kind of are merged into one, you know, because the face isn't really a perfect circle. There's, it's just simplified uh, into two different shapes when you start drawing. But when you, uh, when you look at the face itself, it's actually a combination of both. You know, it's a cylinder and a circle combined into one in a sense. Um, so it would be from side to side, there will be curvature to it where the shadows would start to form, so on and so forth. So this is just an example to show that, you know, when you do study the object under light, it does lend itself into understanding how it plays on other objects as well. You know, you start to recognize, yeah, it's only gonna come from this side, it's gonna come from the left side, and then when you switch it over, you'll get to see it for yourself as well. So it's going to be less about style and it's going to be more about understanding the foundation of uh, light and shadow. That's going to help you uh, make your drawings great. You know, uh, you're going to be um, able to rely less on somebody else's style of drawing or somebody else's drawing as a reference. Um, or for example, there are people who always draw the shadow coming from the right side because that's how they've always drawn it. And when it comes to any other light source, it becomes a problem for them because they don't understand these effects that happen on an object, on the face. You know, they don't understand or quite grasp it. You know, they haven't really visually examined it themselves. Um, so yeah, just get yourself something simple like that or even just like I was mentioning, you could take your paper. It has to be something of a thick, um, there has to be some thickness to it so that when you fold it, it can actually hold shape um, and tape it together. And as I mentioned, you could also create a top for it as well. You could cut out a circle and tape it up. Um, make yourself a little project there so that you could study light better. Um, so, uh, yeah, so where I was getting at actually, this whole point where I was talking about using the cylinder shape is that when you're sketching, you're able to, instead of sketch nothing and you're just like, you know, hoping for the best in a sense while you're making these quick loose lines, um, you're actually straight away going to the cylinder shape. As I mentioned, it's pretty much making up and as you saw, it makes up pretty much the entire body 
And there's plenty of examples here to show that. And this is the point of it, is to show how the cylinder shape really plays into pretty much everything. Um, so yeah, when you're sketching, you're trying to get some sort of groundwork to start from. You're trying to create a, a frame um, a fr uh, to frame the drawing in, in a certain place, in a certain area on a page. You could just straight away jump to that. So that's the benefit of also practicing that shape, practicing the cylinder shape. You're able to uh, simplify your lines more, even in the sketching process, you know, you quickly go. And it just kind of reminded me while I was doing this example that I wasn't searching for any lines really. I, I had a goal, goal was to create a cylinder shape that really uh, matches this, this guide, this guideline right here down the middle. And that took me a while to just accept as a, as a valuable lesson. You know, I used to just, uh, if I did sketch things out, I would, um, I would just do very loose, quick lines. And then just like I was saying, I would just hope for the best, like, oh, this looks right. You know, this line right here is about right. Um, but then once I started to, as you guys see, there's like plenty of pages and there was plenty of other sketchbooks where I kept on drawing these diagrams, these examples, which you guys could also find on uh, my Patreon page. I was going to mention that. I uploaded this page right here for you. Where are you, page? No. This page right here, uh, just diagrams helping you um, understand a more simplified way of measuring the body and proportions of the body. So you guys could check out the Patreon page. It starts at tier two, you get access to all the content. Um, and you could just do whatever you want with this. You could print it out, you could have it side by side. If you're not looking at the screen all the time, you're trying to do it traditionally. You could print out this page and draw it over and over again. Again, as I mentioned, just seeing it isn't enough. Just looking at it, drawing it once isn't enough. You have to continuously do it in order to for it to really ingrain itself into your mind it's similar to something that i mention very often um the alphabet you know reciting it once wasn't enough right you had to continue to recite it you had to test yourself you had to um, do it over and over again daily in order to um, grasp it better to understand it better so it's the same idea here you know, you're you're supposed to uh, draw this several times. So this will give you a perfect opportunity. Um, you could download it, print it, or just if you are doing it digitally, have it side by side. And then you could do it at your own pace. I have it here for you guys. You can study it as much as you like. Just think it would be helpful to also have it as a file itself uh, for things like printing. You know, if you did print it out, you, you would have it there for you at any time that you wanted to. Uh, and I personally prefer that, you know, the more, uh, more and more I take time to think about this, like digital age that we're in, where everything is basically turning into subscription, you're, you're uh, owning less and less, you know, especially when it comes to digital content. I understand if it's, let's say, toxic objects that are better to just share rather than keep mass producing them. Um, but when it comes to this, you know, it's a digital file. It's something that's in a computer, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't physically exist itself. Um, and not to own it and to just uh, rent it. I don't think that's right in a sense. I think, especially with like music or whatever, if you're paying for it, you should just be able to have it and do whatever, um, whatever you'd like. But now things are becoming more about uh, renting. Um, so I prefer to just own books, you know, actual physical form of them, because if something happens one day digitally to like whatever the application, the company, the whatever it is, you might not even have it anymore. Um, I would rather just own the book and be able to have it whenever, whenever I'd like off the internet, you know, on the internet, whatever, that doesn't matter. 
you could just um, and you could just take a break from all that stuff you know the digital content and you could just open up a book or in this example you just take out these sheets and sit down and draw from them um, so yeah that's available for you guys I'm gonna be uploading more of these uh, diagrams to help you uh, through the week every week I'm gonna try to upload more and more stuff there for you guys to check out and to own um, so yeah um, just going back to this I'm gonna quickly finish off this diagram and I'm gonna need to move on to the next stream y'all which is gonna be the project stream I'm excited about it I'm getting some pretty good results uh, I haven't had a chance recently to get back into it so I'm looking forward to actually starting that stream uh, today after I take a quick five minute break and get ready for this next stream I'll be honest, I'm not really sure. You know, I am drawing it from this book. I'm not really sure what the benefit of it is to like divide it into these sections. Um, but I always take it as an opportunity to once again practice and uh, get better at drawing it. But in some ways, you could see that this little section right here is for the knee. And then um, and then you have the other leg, which is kind of divided into other four sections, basically. So four sections for the top of the leg, then this small section for the knee. And then you could see uh, that it is divided into one, two, like eight sections for the bottom one, all the way up to the ankles. But most importantly, it is this line right here and how you guys could see that it really does uh, repeat throughout the other parts of the leg as well. Um, that it is a useful guide to help you guys understand um, the, the, the structure of the leg. All right, y'all. So this is it for the drawing uh, figure drawing session. Stick around, I'm gonna be back in five minutes for the project stream.
I want to ask you first of all about the music. I want to ask you first of all about.